Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to one more game from Tata Steel Chess Tournament in Vegan Z 2020, round 13. And the only decisive game, and uh, the rest of the games are draws, and I'm gonna make another a video about that so uh, keep in mind that the last standing is gonna be shown one of the games uh, I will choose from one drone games and uh, link over there so uh, feel free to click and after this exciting video just watch another one uh, with the last standing uh, but here we have Vladislav Artemiev uh, 2731 that's his rating he's a grandmaster from russia extremely strong in blitzing but uh, he's still not really on the really top of the uh, classical time control and he play as white and on the opposite side we have fabiano caruana uh, number two in the world and definitely number one in this tournament he won this tournament before reaching the last round and now he just play for fun or maybe for rating as he is a very serious uh, player who who treat all the games very seriously uh, that's a very impressive approach to the game and he's ranking 2822 he's american italian grandmaster so let's see what happened on the board knight f3 by artemiev so ready opening on the board and now black can approach that uh, for many many ways d5 was played g3 and knight d7 very elastic move um, now caruana can set up uh, a lot of different ideas he's here of course uh, e5 would be the first one uh, to come to mind uh, c4 was played so in it's more like english opening now transposing uh, but it's still uh, in the area of king's indian attack uh, King's Indian attack, not defense, because white playing uh, this Fianchetto construction. D takes on c4 and queen on a4 by Artemiev. Now we have a6 preparing b5. So uh, the queen, of course, has to take on c4. And we have b5 with tempo, queen c2 and bishop b7. Uh, so it's a bit similar to the game last game I commented here uh, where Caruana played with um, Jan Krzysztof Duda Caruana played as white uh, and Jan Krzysztof Duda had the problems on the queen side to to make all these uh, pawn structures you know stable so a6 seems like a very important move in such uh, constructions and here we have bishop g2 by Artemiev, knight g on f6, and we have castle by Artemiev, and we have e6, so giving the space for the, for the bishop to, to approach uh, wherever it wants, and here we have d3, so uh, it's kind of uh, dragon uh, pawn structure by white, uh, pretty solid as it's controlled uh, the central pawns uh, quite solidly, and we have here bishop on e7 and here Artemiev challenged this uh, pawn structure playing a4 and um, now if if black don't want to do anything with that then um, and, and play for example b4 that would be very bad idea because after b3 and let's say castle bishop b2 and black would be in the troubles uh, as this c pawn uh, never could reach to uh, to c4 and attack so that would be uh, very difficult for black this is why um, b4 is definitely unplayable but c5 uh, it's much better move and here we have knight on c3 so approaching similar way like um, Caruana approach to, to Jan Krzysztof Duda just the pawn structure is already different as um, a pawn is much advanced and here we have queen on b6 so strengthening the this this pawn structure so uh, Artemiev just exchange the pawns and exchange the rooks on a8 and here we have bishop on g5 uh, if queen on b3 for example trying to provoke um, to some uh, push some pawns 
it's possible, but knight d5 could be could be played, and um, this bishop actually uh, don't have any nice square to land. So bishop g5 actually would be the only square. This doesn't make any sense. This is controlled by the by the knight. So bishop g5, and black would just simply, uh, for example, exchange first here, and then exchange uh, minor pieces. And everything would be just very drawish without any any finesse. Mm. So not not really the the, the way to play. Uh, as we see, Artemiev also decide to not play the the easiest chess. So Bishop G five, and now we have the castle. Uh, rook A one. Now there are some uh some ideas of taking this bishop with the uh, you, and, and do do some discoveries here and uh, that could be uh, interesting maybe h6 was played by caruana so kicking the the bishop and actually bishop doesn't have really great squares to to go so um Artemiev decided to exchange this bishop for the knight uh, but that gave the opportunity to Caruana to put his bishop on the main diagonal. And here we have knight on d2, so exchanging, uh, forcing to exchange the, the bishop, uh, because now the bishop and rook attacks the bishop twice, so bishop g2, king g2, and here rook on c8, uh, pretending to actually play c4 or maybe really wanted to, to, to play that. So uh, queen on b3 was played by Artemiev and now rook goes to b8. Uh, uh, so now that the, it's, it's still possible to play c4. Uh, and here we have knight c on e4. Uh, so attacking the, uh, putting the pressure on c5. Uh, but also attacking the bishop and um, Black, of course, don't want to lose that bishop, exchange that bishop, so bishop on e7. And here white play king on g1. And uh, the question why? Probably because uh, queen can be moved to this diagonal and cause some problems with that pin. Uh, for example, f5. But let's see what would happen if knight f3 uh, is tried by white. It could be very important move because now f5 would be met with knight uh, e on d2. Uh, there is a space now. And here, for example, g5, continuing the attack, h3 uh, could be played. Uh, and now, for example, queen c6, and now king g1 can be played very easily without any problems. Uh, h5, and the game can continue with uh, even slight advantage of white. Uh, but king g1, it looks similar, it looks almost the same, but now it's different. f5, knight c3, and now white has different structure um, of, the, of the pieces. So these knights, um, th th this, is, this is the difference. The knight should be placed here and the knight should control actually e5 square, but it doesn't. Uh, so now knight e5. Um, is played by Caruana, and here is the problem. Uh, this knight can support the c4 move, but also very dangerous move uh, with attack on f2, and and actually after the move uh, on c4. Now this is the problem: double attack on f2 uh, pawn. So h3 has to be played first. Now we have h5. Uh, and here we have knight on f3, so coming back. Uh, the problem is now black can actually capture this knight. But white didn't have uh, any other option. They had to exchange that. Otherwise, this knight would be too active and, and white would have the problems with um, developing any pieces. So it would be very, very passive game. Artemiev um, don't want to allow to that. So he takes on f3. And, uh, and now the problem for white is the two isolated pawns uh, on B and D files. Um, but also for black, there is the one um, pawn on E6, which could be a target. 
So uh, bishop on f6 played first by Caruana, uh, improving the position of the bishop to the longest diagonal, and now we have rook on e1. So um, pressuring the e6 pawn, and here king f7 defending. Knight e2, so improving now position of the knight, very important. If the knight can reach here, actually there is another attacker uh, to the e6 pawn, so uh, it's very uncomfortable for black, so of course g5 is played. Uh, and now white has to find the, the, the way to play this knight, which is not really easy. Um, it shouldn't go back here, as everything is controlled, so not really an option. Uh, so g4 was played, and the threat is g takes on f5, uh, as this pawn is pinned. So h takes on g4, h takes on g4, and f takes on g4. And after takes f takes on g4, we have queen on d6. And here knight on g3. So uh, actually this knight found the way to, to get the very nice outpost on e4. So here we have queen d5 first. So um, trying to exchange the queens. Of course, uh, Artemiev don't want to exchange the queens, so he has to lose the tempo and move to queen on c2. And uh, Artemiev don't want to exchange because that would um, improve the position and uh, pawn structure of black. And black would have very comfortable um, um, endgame. So queen c2 was played. And here we have bishop on d4, important uh, move. This bishop now is uh, so great located. It's pin actually this pawn. So there are a lot of tactics here. The, the easiest to explain is of course uh, getting um, to take this, um, this knight, but the things are more complicated. Queen e2 was played um, by Artemiev, and now we have rook on h8. Uh, so now this knight can be moved because of the of the attack on h1. So it's quite dangerous, uh, and also it actually could be maybe somehow this uh, this knight could be eliminated. Maybe with some maybe with some plan like uh, attacking this way. So. Artemy found a way to uh, block this and he put his knight on e4. So um, that's the really great outpost. And now this knight can attack uh, g5, can attack the c5, and also controls around the, around the king some, some important squares. We have queen on e5 now. So there is another threat now. Uh, even checkmating ideas here. And here is the, the problem now for Artemiev. He needs to make another six moves and he has only two minutes for that. Of course, it's the incrementation, 30 seconds incrementation. So actually um, he has another um, three minutes. So altogether it would be about five minutes to make um, the moves in such a complicated game. So he started from queen f3 check, king g7, and now it's his first problem. This b pawn is actually attacked, and it's attacked twice, so it's um, impossible actually to defend it, uh, and has to play something. Uh, queen g3 was a quite interesting option, because actually it forces black to... Um, to exchange the, the queens. If not, then the queen can go to c7 and be really active on the seven rank. So that would be very dangerous for um, for black. So that would have to be exchanged. And after knight takes on g3, rook f8 could be played. And after knight e4, defending, because that was double attack here, uh, then rook f4. And this pawn is lost. Uh, of course, this move this can't be moved because of the pin. So king f1, rook g4, rook e2, defending this this pawn, and that would be slightly better for black, but still playable. Uh, other idea would be 
maybe rook on e2 uh, the problem is uh, queen h2 with check king f1 now rook f8 and here for example uh, of course queen queen g3 is impossible to play because queen g3 uh, that forces this, this is the first line so uh, queen h3 and after queen g2 queen can take on d3 so this um, this knight doesn't have any any support from d3 anymore so knight g5 it's very complicated line but it's quite interesting and now rook actually can take on f2 queen on f2 because rook is pinned and there is not much uh, options here and knight on e6 uh, with check king f6 and king on f2 uh, so that would be the the final standings and of course it's winning for black so that would not be an option but in this position queen on g2 was possible and then after queen on f4 and knight d2 bishop on b2 could be taken but in cost of rook on e6 uh, and here for example rook on f7 uh, because that's a still dangerous uh, approach of the queen with extra attacks and white would probably could construct some attack uh, f3 consolidating and also defending the knight on d2 uh, and here queen d4 could be played uh, and in this position is uh, still slightly better for um, for black of course uh, white approaching now d3 so it's gonna fall and black would have um, some difficulties would have to find some some way how to play maybe something on the on the h5 i'm not sure what would be the best here um, very complicated position but probably uh, would be interesting option for white but it was so complicated to to calculate all of this uh, that Artemiev just with less than two minutes for for last five moves he just play b3 and here we have rook on f8 by caruana and queen on e2 so getting away and uh, strengthening a bit the defense and here we have queen on d5 uh, queen on d5 of course attacking b3 uh, which is actually untouchable i will show you why but also it's 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 a small trap because now if king on g2 is played because king on g2 is very natural move uh, because this pin is very annoying and if king on g2 and f3 can be played then white position would be much stronger there would be no weakness on g4 so it would be pretty nice but after after uh, king on g2 actually black can play rook takes on f2 and this just uh, losing the queen because this knight is now pinned so uh it, it's 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 just um easy easy win for for black now so not an option but very interesting in this position king h2 king h2 actually and for example if black decide to take on b3 then now we would have knight on c5 attacking the queen so something has to be done about that and bishop on c5 is not really the best idea because queen because queen on e5 with check king f7 and now queen on c5 taking that bishop and yes queen d3 but uh, but still this is very drawish and white would just um, shouldn't have any problems uh, with the queen and, and rook endings with uh, even with the one um, pawn down so um, that would be interesting option for uh, for white uh, of course this can don't don't need to be taken uh, right away there is um other other way for example rook can take on f2 with check uh, and that's also interesting uh, so now queen would have to take on f2 bishop takes on f2 and after knight takes on b3 exchanging the queens that would be another option for the for uh, for this game so Mm, probably better for black but definitely white would could just try to play this way 
Uh, but Artemiev have one minute now and have three moves or four moves to, to, to do. So Rook F1 is the most solid one as it um, gives the extra protection for important F2 pawn. And here we have King on G6. Uh, of course, uh, if, if, if Queen takes on B3, then all of this would happen again, uh, exchanging all the pieces and probably, uh, and probably drawish, um, drawish endgame. Uh, this is why king on g6 was played and here we have queen on d1 and uh, and caruana want to first solve all the pawn problems on the queen side so c4 was played uh, b takes on c4 b takes on c4 and king g2 and here caruana uh, of course of course this uh, couldn't be taken because the uh, this is support for the for the knight, so knight would be taken, so uh, not an option. So um, bishop on a7 was played. Actually, Caruana, who now now we have already 41st move, so both of players got the extra 40 minutes um, incrementation, and uh, now Caruana could play rook on f4, and for example after f three uh, consolidating uh, all the position c3 was possible and the idea would be now all this position on the king side is is locked so now the rook can actually uh, enter the game from both sides uh, at least can try so for example a rook on e1 to to prevent from this side uh, and rook on f8 rook e2 uh, rook and a8 a and uh, that would be the plan for for black uh, still is playable so white would have to decide how to do but there are also problems on on another another side so it still can be attacked from that side so white would have very difficult uh, position uh, like can be attacked from both sides from flanks so bishop on a7 was played and here f3 so white consolidate the position now this knight is actually untouchable because uh, it's it's protected and also um, there are no minor pieces who would attack this knight so very strong piece which uh, can play a main role c takes on d3 so creating the pass pawn by caruana and here is still everything very okay for for artemiev his his best chance was queen on d2 creating the strong pressure on the g5 pawn uh, so this queen can't actually move anywhere uh, has to stay on this uh, on this um, rank uh, or the, the, the rook would have to go and stay there, but then other pieces of, of white would have some activity. So that would be very, very strong uh, move. Uh, so for example, rook on c8, if want to, you know, um, pin the queen, and that would be met with rook on c1, so pretty easy. And after exchanging, all everything would be, would be in similar way and uh, now this bishop actually can do anything here and if bishop want to want to play for example on b8 to 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 come here then queen on c8 would be played and now white would have the queen behind uh, behind the king so that would be uh, also very dangerous as queen uh, usually very nice cooperate with the with the knight so that would be quite dangerous and comfortable for black so probably very very drawish and uh, queen a1 was played the move is not so bad yet but it led black to play bishop on e3 and uh, bishop on e3 of course um, don't let uh, white to keep the pressure on the on the g5 pawn but still white could play queen on e1 and everything would be quite okay for example queen on a2 knight f2 bishop f2 exchanging 
uh, and for example queen on e4 with check uh, king f6 and rook takes on f2 with attack on the queen now d2 doesn't work of course because uh, queen d4 picking up the pawn uh, after after um, after that so that's uh, totally drawish and so so black would have the problems with approach to this to this fortress because white built some kind of fortress not not really the great one but uh, but it was not easy to approach so this queen on e1 would be would be you know another defensing move however that was not the line uh, artemiev choose uh, he play instead rook on d1 and everything looks okay uh, it's blocking the 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 pawn uh, from approaching but actually it led caruana to to make the winning sequence for black so feel free to pause the video and uh, try to find the continuation for black how to actually win this game while i enjoy my cup of tea yeah. okay so there are many ways actually to win that game uh, but they have the, they, they are in the similar fashion queen on c4 queen on b3 uh, are like clear win so queen on c4 with the plan of getting to uh, c2 that's the idea so queen c3 first blocking that but now we have queen on a2 and here knight on d2 was played and then queen on c2 so now black forcing white to do something and queen on c2 of course can be taken because that's losing uh, on the spot and uh, and actually here rook on c8 can be played uh, and after for example um, moving the, the the knight to b3 then exchanging on c1 and of course winning rook d8 king f2 and getting that and getting that knight and uh, with extra rook is of course uh, winning so uh, not an option however queen on e5 was played and uh, this is another interesting story now uh, and i want you to pause the video if you found this it's it, it, it's great if you didn't it, it's also okay but now try to find the idea what black should do now to win this game because it's not won yet why i enjoy my cup of tea again okay so if you try to take the rook which is a pretty natural move actually it's probably uh, drawing because now queen e6 uh let white to have a perpetual check and for example king g7 queen e5 uh king g8 queen e6 it's nothing can be done here for example rook f7 if the black try to escape this way and uh, then it's also impossible queen e8 king g7 and now queen e5 king f8 and now queen b8 king e7 queen e5 with check king d7 now queen b5 with double attack so actually this king can be moved to d6 because then um, white would just simply take um, both of these uh, pieces pawn and the and the bishop and that would be uh, clearly draw so king on e6 now uh, queen on c6 uh, king e5 if trying to get somewhere deeper maybe this way it's also impossible because queen e4 so queen f6 queen f5 and now repeat the situation uh, repeat that that loop somewhere here uh, or just go to the g7 so that would not work that would be just a draw however bishop on d2 works much better and now we have uh totally different situation now this rook cannot play cannot play actually it's under attack and 
the perpetual check doesn't really work because of this queen controlling the c file so all this square is un are unavailable for the queen so let's see how that happened in the game so we have queen e6 in similar fashion king g7 queen e7 rook f7 queen e5 king f8 and now queen b8 king e7 queen e5 with check king d8 and now queen b8 again uh, and here we have queen uh, king on d7 and now queen b7 king d6 queen b6 now king e5 and now this queen actually can't follow more to to be close to the king uh, so queen b5 but that lets um, black to play king on d4 uh, and here we have queen on b6 with check and king on c4 now we have queen on e6 double attack but of course the the rook can be taken because uh, white rook also would be taken uh, so king on c3 queen e5 with check king on b3 queen d5 with check king b2 and now queen b5 check and here we have bishop b4 check now it is the discovered check on the king so here we have a uh, king on g3 and now black has some move so of course queen on d1 winning the game however we still have queen on b4 by artemiev uh, queen on b3 queen on d2 king on b1 queen on e1 uh, king on c2 so coming closer to the pawn uh, queen f2 and d2 and in this position white resigns there is totally nothing to do white of course can check one more time but after queen on c3 there are no more checks uh, this is controlled by the rook so uh, queen f2 king c1 and after check just winning very easy winning for black so one more time congratulations to fabiano caruana make a big noise for him and uh, yeah he won not only in the uh, round before but he also won the last game in style he pushed to the end and he tortured artemiev uh, till the end even in the position where um he has initiative but it was still um not winning uh, so he could you know just take a draw and win this tournament um but he didn't so 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 i'm very surprised and i'm very uh impressed by this behavior so yeah once more time congratulations and uh, and yeah if you want to, to see the last final standings i'm gonna make one more video win one more game to show you how the draws look in this round um, so uh, feel free to click there and just jump to the final standings uh, and see you over there and thanks for watching and see you in the next one